controversy is trail government's handling of situation related to freedom of speech and human rights. As some Nigerians say, free speech is threatened under the Buhari government. And the main opposition political party in the PDP says it is worried about possibility of manipulation of election security in the adult governorship election. Hello everyone and welcome to the program. This is the midweek edition of Politics Today, live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Joaquin Baloye in Lagos and we're going to take you through this one hour ride into some of your biggest stories in politics in Nigeria. Let's begin with uh, some of the worries of the main opposition political party in Nigeria, the PDP, ahead of the September 19th governorship election in Edo State. The two major contestants, that is the People's Democratic Party and the All Progressives Congress, are obviously not done with accusations and counter-accusations about plots to compromise the credibility of the exercise. The latest of these accusations is coming from the PDP as its spokesperson for the Edo Governorship Campaign Council, Mr. Kola Ologbodion, says the party has uncovered plans by the APC to compromise security on election day. He was addressing journalists today in Abuja, the PDP insists that some leaders of the main opposition party in Edo State are planning to recruit fake security personnel ahead of the election next month. Already, our national campaign has been made aware of plots by Oshomole to design fake military uniforms, police and other security agencies' uniforms for APC talks with the view of using them to unleash violence and clamp down on traditional faith-based, and community leaders in Edo State on trump up charges. While our national campaign understands the pedigree of Professor Gambari, we want to, however, caution him not to allow his record of service to be tainted with the violence being perpetrated by the APC in Edo State, as well as Oshua Mollet's repeated calls for clamp down on the Edo people ahead of this election. The world is watching. However, in this Edo election, the PDP wants to assure the APC and their leaders that the people of Edo State will never allow the Kogi, Kano, Ekiti, or Osun scenario to play out in their state. Let it be known, and clearly too, that the PDP is standing shoulder to shoulder with the people of Edo State to resist Oshio Mole's fake police and other fake security operatives that they are planning to import into Edo for the September 19 election. Nothing, and indeed nothing, will by any means be allowed to bend the will of the people on September 19 in Edo State. We will quickly get into um, the matter of tonight, the conversation about uh, the civic space and the free speech in Nigeria, human rights issues, are those being threatened under President Muhammad Buhari's watch? We dissect that tonight for you. But first, let's check out some other stories that we are following for you on our political roundup. President Mohamedou Buhari today chaired the 13th virtual Federal Executive Council meeting at the State House in Abuja. Altered significantly since After the meeting, Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashala, says Council approved the revised estimate of five subsisting contracts. The Minister of the FCT, on his own part, says Council also approved the rehabilitation of the Lua Usuma Dam water treatment plant phase two, with an additional cost of 1.5 billion naira, bringing the total contract sum to 2.52 billion naira. The contract is to last 12 months and will provide water for FCT residents for the next 30 years. The All Progressives Congress in Anambra State has criticized the ABGA-led government of Governor Willy Obiano over economic policies and infrastructural development of the state, which they say is below average. Speaking at a press conference at the APC State Secretariat in Oka, the state capital, the acting chairman of the party, Mr. Basil HDK, says the level of infrastructural decay is worrisome, especially in the area of road infrastructure. This regime started on a very clear-cut 
blueprint and ideology. Responding to the criticism, the special advisor to Governor Willy Obiano on political matters, the APC cannot fold the government of Willy Obiano as his performances speak for him. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. So let's dive straight into the matter that we are going to be discussing with my panel tonight. Some Nigerians have begun to raise eyebrow about the civic space with the recent events in the country. First was the announcement by the Minister of Information to increase the fine of, uh, on hate speech in the country. And then came the invitation of Dr. Obadiah Melafia, the former CBN deputy governor by the DSS. And thereafter, a former Speaker of the House, Gali Naba, of over state uh, by the DSS also, about, over some of the statements they said they, were, uh, they made uh, in relation to security uh, in the country. Yeah, those incidents have generated criticisms against the government as a form of intimidation and threats to free speech and rights of citizens. A civil society organization yesterday addressed a press conference saying that they are worried by government's approach lately. Tonight we'll be looking into the matter. For you as a citizen, wherever you may be watching, what are your views on the one manner and the approach of the government of the day in handling the issues of human rights and free speech? So let's get talking tonight. We'll get a reaction from um, the uh, special media special assistant to the president on, uh, on the publicity and the media, Mr. Garber Oshie, who, who joins us now from Abuja. Okay, so uh, we'll go to uh, Malam Shewuf in a moment. Uh, but uh, let's go to Abuja studio uh, with uh, Honorable Tajuddin Yusuf, who is a member of the PDP and a member of the House of Representatives. He joins us from our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, Honorable, for coming uh, to, uh, to the program tonight. Honorable, uh, a civil society organization came up to say there is a threat on free speech in Nigeria. Could that be true? Absolutely true. I'm privileged to be involved in the struggle to ensure democratic governance in Nigeria. At the point of the Secretary General of Nigerian Students, it wasn't this bad. We could address press conference and make allegations, make prosperous statements about the government. We still had the privilege of being allowed to make those statements. Yeah. The occasion that the military released, those they released, the DSS after us and what have you. But after the advent of democracy in 1990, I will believe we are gradually uh, beginning to understand the value of freedom of speech to, endanger, to engender democratic values and help society deepen respect for human rights. And fortunately for this government, 2013 and 14, the government rode on these fundamental values of democracy to challenge Iku Ben Den. I, the Fashola's, Arufai, Amechi's made a lot of statements that were more volatile, stronger. I mean, Arufai accused the president of sponsoring Boko Haram. I remember then. He wasn't arrested. The present president, Amechi and others, led a protest to the IG, walked from uh, uh, the Unity Fountain through the Eagle Square, did they match on the need to have a free and fair election and that nobody should be intimidated? So how come <laughs> the same men who enjoy those privileges and are now rode on those privileges to power are scared of free speech? Free speech does something. It puts both the citizens and the, rule and the, and the leaders in check. And they, we have plethora of laws on libel that you could, I mean, you used to challenge if anybody made libelous statement and lie, or lie against you. And I've not seen such in any of these accusations. What did Namba say? Namba stated the obvious that's on the street. There are no new things in what he said. What has Obadia said that Eruf has not even said as a governor? I did say to him of recent. Some of the things he made. So I, I was expecting that Obadia should be invited and say, you said so, so, so yes. These are the things I said. It will be investigated. If he found, if he has found to be have been lying to the world, 
to carry certain favor or whatever view. The laws are there to deal with it. All of a sudden, the Minister of Information had a code, not an act of parliament, a subsidiary law made by a minister who now compete with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The uh, Supreme Court rules on this. Section 39 of the Constitution is clear. Any law, even if it is an act of National Assembly that is in conflict with the Constitution, it's not a void. And I'm happy that the SAT, the president, was the president of uh, the Nigeria Guilds of Editor. You understand what the media of freedom of speech. So I think they should guide the administration that the people who make policy and take decisions uh, better so that to help the government understand that uh, freedom of speech help you hear the people well. If when you gag the people, you have the piece of the graveyard and it's a time bomb when people Honorable. cannot hear their opinion. Honorable. And some of us are coming together to challenge this to challenge those, uh, those uh, intention to gag freedom of speech, which I did on the, to challenge on the floor, and if need be, we'll go to the law court to challenge it and put it, those things to test so that Nigerians will know that uh, such things cannot stand in this age and time. We, must, we have left those shops. We have not left those bus stops. Nobody can take us back there. Uh, we understand that, that some of the scenarios that you have played out, uh, that you have uh, described now, my question now will be, what has changed now from that moment that you have described that perhaps gives you the impression that things are bad? First of all, the mere fact that that code came to be. And the show, uh, you are in this country. Between 2001 and 2014, 15, you listened to Lail Mohammed. You followed him. Just Google his name. Google his name and listen to his speeches. Now compare those things to what is happening now. So the mere fact that you are not comfortable with people expressing their opinion is a right. If you feel they have lied, the procedures are there. Even the NBC Act lists the procedures to, 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 give, to give a fine. A fine. You should, one, have a complaint, but whoever feels that that interview has a fridge on his right or threaten his person. Two, whoever you are going to find has a right of fair hearing. You should write them to explain what happened and what have you. Well, they just sat somewhere and issue a fight to the radio station. We are not in the Bab Banana Republic. He can't stand. So those are the reasons why we are worried. The mere fact that there is such attempt is scary. Honorable, uh, we, the world we belong to now is perhaps different from what we experienced a year ago, five years ago, or 10 years ago. With what we are seeing across the world, as not, in, not only in Nigeria, uh, in the United States, in the 2016 election, we know what fake news and hate speech uh, cost them in their country. Do you think that, that uh, the approach of government shouldn't be different in handling uh, some of these uh, 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 phenomena that has uh, bedeviled our society? Just climb where you refer to. What has the government done? They deliberately uh, increase and the tempo of disseminating the right information. They engage the people every time. And when they identify such false alarm, they give a contrary position to dispel it. And whoever makes those allegations are made to face the wrath of the law. In the, not that they come out with the code all of a sudden. By who? Who determined the hate speech? The Minister of Information? No. It should be the law court, and there should be procedures. All we are saying that the procedures must be seen as transparent, must be seen as fair, must not be seen as an attempt to gag the people. And one thing about justice, it must not only be done, it must be seen as done. Justice is not done in secrecy. Justice is not a prerogative of one group. Justice is for all. Okay, just so a moment. Uh, is honorable. Nobody is challenging that, and that is what it should be. We must, at every point, be on our toes to have... I mean, laws, procedures, I want to check the dynamism of the, of the generation we are in, but not in this manner. All right. Have we Honorable, tried let, let, let's hear from uh, the spokesperson of the president. Yeah, just a moment. Uh, I'm now being joined uh, now by uh, the special assistant to the president of media and publicity, Madam Garba Shehu. Um, just uh, let me first and foremost begin by asking you about the video of the visit of the former national chairman of uh, the APC, Mr. Adams Oshomale, who was captured 
uh, and when he was uh, when he visited the pres the villa with the president's chief of staff. Let me show you that video, which has uh, generated some controversy now, and the allegations that have come on that. Uh, Malam, Malam Shewu, the allegation is that there is a plan to intimidate opposition in a dossier. Can you clarify to Ross that engagement that has become now uh, uh, an instrument or uh, an incident of uh, controversy? Well, let me first of all tell you that uh, the recording incident was unfortunate because uh, a journalist uh, with the cameras there to report uh, events, not to bomb the people. Uh, what we record, had in, in the villa the other day was a bugging incident. And because the, the people who did the bugging were in a hurry to black paint some leaders of the administration, they edited facts to suit their own purpose. It is unfortunate. Uh, the conversation between the chief of staff and, and the Adams of Shomole was basically about the president's expressed concern that the two sides to the contest, mainly PDP and the APC, are both complaining that, that the thugs uh, bearing weapons were intimidated. President's clear directive was Whoever is caught with weapon, displaying it or using it about to do so should be arrested. This was the conversation. It was not about arresting opposition people in it. The president is a product of opposition politics, so he cannot undermine opposition in this country. I mean, the, uh, one of the promises of the president, uh, campaign promises, is to ensure that there is free, fair, and uh, free and fair, credible election under his watch, but with the fear and the accusation coming from the opposition that they have information that the sec security might be used to compromise the process, how is the president reacting to that? And are there assurances that nothing of such will happen? Well, let me say that uh, if it is the, the thuggish threat coming from PDP, we are used to that. The idea is to intimidate people to black paint every state institution. The judiciary has not escaped a blemish by PDP. The police, the army, the INEC, there is nobody that is free of, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of PDP harassment, intimidation, and blackmail in situations where they think or they fear that they might be losing advantages that they think they have. This is not how electoral contests should be run. What is the president thinking about this? The president's directive clearly is that he wants to do elections in the country, leave behind a legacy of elections better than the one that brought him to office. And his clear directive to all of them is go out there and do the right things. And he expects nothing less from the police and the INEC and all other security agencies. But, uh, uh, Malam Shewu, if you look at what happened in Bayelsa and Kogi elections, which happened on the same day, INEC came out at a post-election uh, analysis, their own report stating that security was compromised against their own uh, will and agenda for that election. INEC, that is the umpire in that election, came out to say security was their major problem. Uh, and perhaps for those who are saying that uh, uh, they, they, they foresee that security is going to be compromised, don't, don't you think that they have a premise to think so? Uh, in all of those accusations, I am sure the records did not state that uh, this was on the direction of President Muhammad Buhari. This is not that kind of president. Let's take a breather. But when we come back, uh, Mr. Shehu, I would like you to react to the fears of civil society organization that under President Buhari, free speech is being threatened and that the media is in the process of being guarded. You're going to be telling us what the president thinks about this and the way forward for Nigeria. That's next on the program, everyone. Join us again. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Let's get back to the conversation about the atmosphere of free speech 
and the issues of human rights under President Muhammad Buhari. How has the government fared in handling some of these issues that are the hallmark of democracy? Mr. Garuba Shehu is a senior special assistant to President Buhari on media and publicity. He's been speaking to us on the program, and all, I have as well uh, from Abuja, so a member of the opposition and a member of parliament, Honorable Tajuddin Yusuf. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time tonight. Let me get back to uh, Malam Shehu. Uh, for some of the incidents that have been described as unprecedented in the history, at, at least the recent history, of Nigeria democracy. In fact, some people have uh, described that what did not happen under the military is perhaps happening under the watch of President Buhari in relation to free speech. Is the president worried about the scenario and the fear that free speech is being threatened under his watch? Please, uh, this is Nigeria. This is not Mali. Can you cite examples? I can't see the kind of examples that uh, justify this, uh, this uh, hyperbole you are projecting. Can we get examples from you? These are not my words. These are the worries of a civil society organization yesterday. And uh, it, no, I will go over, this, just a moment, Mr. Uh, Shehu. Just a moment. Let me describe to you some of the incidents they have uh, brought up in the past few days. First is the incident okay. relating to Dr. Obadiah Melafia. Another is the incident relating to the former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Gali Nababa, uh, who were uh -huh. invited by the DSS. And these are incidents that have uh, happened in the past few days. Just also, recently, okay. the Minister of Information said there is going to be a hike in the, the fine on hate speech in the country. These are some of the incidents that have been drawn by the opposition, the civil society, and they are alleging that there is a threat on free speech. Okay, so what is unprecedented there? Is this the first time the Department of Security Service is inviting people for questioning? When somebody claiming to be a responsible citizen makes such a claim as the Obadiah Melafia did, saying that a governor is commander of Boko Haram and he shouldn't be asked questions? So what kind of society do we want? We are leading a country of people who will go to UK and America and obey all the laws. And in the country, when there is an enforcement, they start crying. Uh, please, uh, Naba has himself said his business had nothing to do with President Muhammad Bari. So what is political about it? And as for the, inc the, the increase in the, in, the, in, the, in the charge against uh, hate speech, perhaps in the assessment of the minister, yeah, half a million that was in place was not being respected. It was not effective in curtailing these things because somebody picking rumor from, say, full new women selling archer, saying people are Boko Haram and is going to the radio to announce that. And an irresponsible radio station takes that and says, this is fit for broadcast. Come on, what are we dealing with? There has to be law enforcement in this country as is happening with our citizens when they go outside the country. This is a country where a South African lady looked at a leading Nigerian leader a leading religious fellow in this country and said, this is South Africa, this is not Nigeria. This is how we want us to treat, is this how they want us to continue to be treated? Malam Shehu, uh, you are a senior colleague. Uh, some of us were younger in journalism when you were active in practice. You were a former yeah. uh, president of the Guild of Editors, perhaps one of the highest bodies in the practice of journalism in the country. And let me ask you, some of the scenarios that you have played, uh, uh, that you have uh, described tonight, did they play out when you were practicing actively in journalism? They did. Worst things did play. In fact, as recently as three years ago, armed, armed men, uh, as recently as a year before President Buhari came into office, soldiers blocked the roads, seized the newspaper copies, and shut down newspaper houses. It has happened. My colleagues the, tell people, the, 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 all of the, the, the magazines there in Lagos, they, they, were, they were publishing underground. In fact, a Nigerian newspaper was publishing from the premises of the American embassy because protection was not there. So what are we talking about? One individual tells a mighty lie against a governor. In fact, all Muslim governors in the North, 16 or so of them, were suspect from that pronouncement. And People say he should walk the streets a free man. 
but he has done no wrong. So what do we want? That should be law in the country, and the people should be maligned, and then and then they just walk away free. Madam Shehu, just a moment. I wanted to listen to the sound bite from yesterday's press conference, and there is a question I would like you uh, to answer afterwards. Take a listen to the civil society organization from their press conference yesterday. In addition to government failures in the economic sphere, is a heightened insecurity in the country. On a daily basis, communities, villages, and towns are attacked by bandits and insurgents and terrorists, with the security services unable to respond in any responsible manner. Multiple calls by state governors, the national legislature, civil society, and citizens for the sack of the ineffective leadership of security agencies have been ignored by the president, President Buhari. Yes. This response is made more saddening by the fact that the leadership of almost all the security agencies in the country remain in office well beyond their time limits. Human rights in the country remain under serious threat with free speech and free expression constantly threatened. Situation calls for the following. The Nigerian government should genuinely seek to implement measures that restores citizens' confidence in its ability to govern. Uh, repeatedly, citizens, citizens' groups, the National Assembly, state governors have called for attention to be paid to the nature and leadership of our security services, and the president has not done so. We call on the president to respect the Constitution, to ensure that security chiefs who have exceeded their terms of office are allowed to go in order that the security services can be made much more effective and efficient. Madam Sherwa, how do you react to that? Well, let me say that whoever that uh, spokesperson is, is a liar. Because uh, there is no section of the law that states a term of office for service chiefs. Please recall the recent interview by General Alani Akirinati, one of the foremost military commanders in the country. He made clear in an interview that they serve at the pleasure of the president. If the president is happy, is satisfied with their performance, it's all up to him. Opinions can be expressed by people. And the fact, in fact, that this gentleman is sitting before cameras and dishing out a lot of these lies, it's also evidence that it's free speech in the country. Nothing more than this can prove that there is free expression and of free speech in the country. So the service chief's matter has been politicized. The president determines who is service commander at his pleasure. Even the National Assembly can merely make recommendations. They cannot force the hand of the president on this matter. All responsibility ends at his table. These things are, are at, his, at his beck and call. So therefore, he determines if they continue in office or they stop. As for other things he has mentioned, security and all of that, well, we know the country we inherited. And the Nigerians are witnesses to that. Because if he had been speaking in Abuja, he probably would have, would have been missing church every Sunday. Because the bombers would have been feared to have to, mosques were empty. We also, the bus stops were empty. The National Day celebration in this country at Eagle Square was bombed. The United Nations was bombed. And for somebody to shamelessly sit down there and say that there is an absence of security in the criminality, yes, there is a banditry and all of them, and they are being tackled. They are being tackled. And uh, for God's sake, there is no nation anywhere in the world where there is no criminality. Even those who took over from us and we took over from and are criticizing us cannot tell us that when they served, there was no kidnapping, there was no banditry, and there was no insurgency. We have reduced all of that to a much lower level. Let me come back to the issue of free speech, uh, Malam Sheo. There is a report by the Amnesty International, which said between January and September 2019, at least 19 journalists, bloggers, and media practitioners have been subject to attacks in this country. How do you react to that? Uh, perhaps 
One of the growing concerns on the perception of this government's handling of free speech and freedom of uh, the rights and uh, expression of it under this government. Yeah, well, let me say to you that uh, uh, journalism, especially the investigative part of it, comes with dangers all over the world. So uh, journalists who take to the practice in its full professional sense, and especially they delve into that aspect of investigation, a lot of times they are exposed to danger, not only in Nigeria, but all over the world. And the thing then is to worry is, is such danger that they face state-sponsored? In many countries of the world, such, such attacks on journalists have been sponsored by elected or unelected administrations. This is not the case in Nigeria. So we feel sorry that journalists have been endangered. But if a chairman of a local council somewhere in far away cross river state tackles a journalist in an unfair way, why would people say it's Buhari? It's our own country. And we should address it as a problem that is national. And not just to personalize and begin to target the president with unfair criticism. Uh, Mr. Mr. Shewu, when your uh, incidents of uh, detention and prosecution of journalists uh, comes also in, uh, as part of the concern that has been raised uh, under these uh, accounts that are being uh, put forward, and uh, I'd like to ask you the approach of security agencies in uh, uh, democratic practices like protests on the street, does it comply to standard global practice? Is the uh, president also uh, looking into the manner in which some of these incidents have happened across the country? The, the president does not uh, uh, endorse the wrong usage of state power or authority against the innocent citizens, whether in street demonstrations or against uh, uh, practicing journalists. So let the point be made that there is never a state policy under present administration. In fact, as I speak to you, there is not a single journalist that is in state detention on the orders of President Muhammadu Buhari or the Nigerian federal government. And so therefore, incidents happen, a local DPO gets power drunk and he locks up a policeman charging to court. But don't just uh, point at Buhari all the time. Mr. Mr. Shewu, I'm talking about protests that we have protesters that have been tear gassed on the street and dispersed by security agencies. Is that not a, a, a sign of worry? Or is that not uh, an it, incident, it, incident that should call for worry? Anybody wrongly treated uh, under our laws, it's a cause for worry. Law enforcement agents have a duty to ensure that demonstrations are done in a manner that does not threaten the well-being and the rights of other citizens. And it, it does not uh, threaten and state institutions and the property. So in that, they have a duty to check excesses. But uh, where innocent citizens, huh? look at what happened with the, with the Shiite community in Abuja here. A whole deputy commissioner of police was shot and killed. A journalist, sadly from your own media organization, was shot and killed. So what are we talking about? Do you classify that as a peaceful protest? about which the police should fold their arms and do nothing? Mr. Shewu, just a moment. Let me allow the uh, honorable member in the Abuja studio to react to some of the things that you've said. Uh, honorable, you heard what uh, Malam Shewu said. How do you react to the way he described what some of this incident that you have raised, you have raised objection that things are not right under this government, but you have heard his explanation. Until we, some of us, or all of us, that are privileged to be in position of authority come to realize that our commitment, first of all, must be about Nigerian state. If we don't have a country, we will not be in those positions. First of all, when he said the president was telling the Edo, uh, the chief of staff, and that they said that the instruction of the president was that he should be free and fair, and whoever causes or attempt to cause mayhem should be arrested. That is not the way to go. You should not call the leader of one group and tell him that. Should I call the security chiefs and give such instruction? Not Adam Toshimole. How will he feel if he had called the opposition and give such instruction? By implication, is you, are you telling me that Adam Toshimole will have gone to the president to say, well, I agree, we are planning violence? No. 
when Adam was seeking second time, President Jonathan gave a free hand so much so that Adams went on air after he won, went to the president to thank him that he never knew he could have this level of I mean, transparency, equity as an opposition governor. That is what the president should do. Two, he's mentioned the fact that these things happened before and it is normal. I mean, compared to what has happened now, what has happened before is more than this. I want to bring to his notice that coming between 2012, 13, 14, where as a nation, beginning to realize the importance of free speech and such never happened at that time. And for him to be saying it happened that, uh, and by implication, uh, it, it is not new. I disagree with him. If he says it's not the president doing it, there's no time it is rare for the president to give instruction. But the president body posture give the leadership to what is, being hap is happening. If he's aware that somebody is detained or somebody is, is being abused and such whoever does it is punished. I neck in talking to stakeholders on Ed uh, Edo and Ondo said, and I quote, if what happened in Kogi or Bayesa repeats itself, we will not declare anybody winner. Is that not enough indictment on the security? So has the president made a statement to say what happened in Kogi or Bayelsa is not at the best of my, I mean, my, my, my knowledge or what I think a free and fair election should be? That will have said the right signal to the people. So uh, I want honorable, to say that honorable Yusuf, we have a responsibility. Honorable Yusuf, in spite can of our you, political leaning. Just a, just a moment. Can you blame the president for those kind of situations that happened? Who was blamed for Boko Haram? I mean, I mean, bombing and what have you in 2013 and 2014? How the president Jonathan became clueless? So why we exonerated the president? Everything for us and fall on leadership. So if, if I, I don't even subscribe to the idea of calling the service chief uh, so, uh, resignation, I don't buy those things. It is the president that is commander in chief. If things are not working, it's on this table. If they did well, it should be the president that will take glory. If they fail, he should take responsibility. He promised to lead from the front. I listened to him. He said, I'm a general. I'll lead from the front. So lead from the front. Let's talk for opportunity blames. If so, things are not working, what makes a leader a leader is to agree that things are not working the way I think it is. Part of what my fear, part of my worry is now, as a member of Rational Assembly is that I have not delivered the way I want, it, I, I desire to be, to have delivered. So I'm worried. And I'm taking right. responsibility to tell you so, that. So, in, 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 on Z. so, so now let's, my mind let's wrap up this deliver. conversation now, Honorable. In 30 seconds, tell me what you think is the way out. You are a member of the opposition, sometimes in a shadowy form of uh, governance also. What do you think is the way forward on the issue of free speech and human rights under this government? What we must continue to do is advocacy must be increased to put whoever is beginning to turn us all tendencies in check. So we should challenge these things in court. I am some of my colleagues are going to do that so that there will be, I mean, there will be court pronouncement against those tendencies. I pray the court to rise up to the responsibility because we, for you to have uh, this kind of thing entrenched in society, you must begin to escalate them to judicial pronouncement so that right. we deep in this and that culture of respect for rule of law, rule of law will be entrenched. All right. The executive must realize one thing, that yesterday it was one party that was in government. Today you are the one there. Tomorrow it will be It's becoming a, a normal thing in Ghana that when the party rules for one or two terms, another party takes over. In America, it's under written law. It is becoming that norm. I pray Nigeria grow into that so that people will understand that if you're in a position of authority... Right. Does Honorable, to we, need to, we need to it wrap up now you uh, on this conversation. Side. So you yeah. will do things... Yeah, we need to wrap up now. Thank you so much for your thought. But let me allow uh, Malam Shewu to react to some of the things that you have said. Uh, Malam Shewu, uh, you are a communications expert, and are you worried about the, the perception, some of the things that he has raised about freedom of speech under this government, just as we wrap up this session? There's nothing of the things he said that I had. Can you just give me a hint? So you said that the, the president should take uh, will directly be blamed. Those are some of the words that are used that the president is the one in charge, that if any of these things happen on the, in this period, that the, the box stop at the, uh, the president table. He also questioned and queried the reason why the president will meet isolatedly Mr. Oshomale without meeting the other uh, parties. Uh, that he, as a president of the nation, he should be meeting them and ordering the security agencies to ensure peace. These are some of the issues that he raised. 
let him let him read the constitution that uh, they, they 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 gave him to swear with. The constitution you cannot be a president of Nigeria if you are not a member of a political party. So what is wrong with the president associating with his own uh, political parties? As for free speech, it is alive, it is healthy, it is vibrant in this country, and the freedom is there for you to take as much as you want. But be responsible. If people are irresponsible as to announce the governors being commanders of Boko Haram, and they don't want to be asked questions, zero. You should get ready to answer for their crime. Malam Garbashehu, Senior Special Assistant to President Buhari on Media and Publicity. Thank you so much for your time tonight, as well as Honorable uh, Tajuddin Yusuf, a member of Parliament and a member of the People's Democratic Party opposition in Parliament. Thank you so much for coming tonight. We'll take a break, everyone. And when we come back, our focus is on, is on security and some of the issues raised. What is happening? How can we be safe in this country with help of the military? and our territorial integrity. Join us again in this conversation. It's true that we lost some states as um, ruling party in a developing country, which is abnormal, but that uh, I'm proud of that, that because we are impartial, uh, that as a ruling party, we lost some states. That shows we have, we have our own mistakes. We got our own mistakes. And uh, I am one of those that uh, defeated us, some of them sitting here, that uh, <laughs> We know we are a developing country, but we respect our country. Otherwise, we would have, uh, because we still have the army, the police, and the rest of them, we could have overrun you. But uh, <laughs> we just wanted to show you that we are humane and we are Nigerians. <laughs> so much everyone for staying with us uh, we turn our attention to the matter of national security it does look like there's been a lot of criticism coming from the national assembly on the security chiefs we've seen a series of meetings by the president with governors and the service chiefs tonight let's be, let's ask some questions on the way forward analyzing Buhari's promises and interventions on national security. I'm now being joined by the special advisor to the defense minister uh, on, te on technical issues and the former director of military intelligence, Major General Hamed Jibrin. He joins us from Abuja studio. Indeed, many thanks for joining us tonight. Let's begin by asking you. It does look that there is a lot of um, uh, uh, loss of uh, hope and loss of um, uh, trust in the service chiefs and therefore... People, uh, some National Assembly members are calling for the sack of uh, uh, the, uh, the service chiefs. As it remains right now, it does look like it's the prerogative of the president. But why do you think that uh, there is that criticism and the call for the sack of the service chiefs? Well, uh, you know, everybody has his own opinion on what is happening in the country. But the issue of the service chiefs is be, uh, being seriously overflogged. We are missing the point. What is important is not for us to focus on who is which service chief. What we should focus is what is happening in the operations that these service chiefs are supervising. I think that's what should bother Nigerians, not who is the service chief. Why are we so particular about uh, these people have to be removed and some people have to come and take over. We are having an operation at hand in various parts of the country, and the operations are going on. Uh, people want quick results. People forget so easily the situation Nigeria was in uh, some years back. Let's say at uh, the beginning of this uh, regime, we have forgotten the fact that we lost 17 of our local governments where Boko Haram hoisted their flags and sacked local authorities and are presiding over affairs there for a long time 
until the same service chiefs that have been vilified came forth and put in the best they could to ensure that all these uh, Boko Haram that were occupying these areas were pushed behind and we regained all our 72 local governments and things were okay. We have also forgotten the fact that in the north, people find it difficult to go to the mosque to pray, especially uh, in the morning because of fear of one attack of Boko Haram or the other. We have also forgotten completely that we are only waiting to hear which is the next town that Boko Haram will attack. It was all over the northeast, they spread to Kano, to Kaduna, to Abuja, and to suburbs of Abuja, like Suleja, and so on. There was fear everywhere. People were afraid to even enter sh uh, shopping malls, afraid whether Boko Haram will attack. There are also cases of these uh, suicide bombers sneaking into crowds, sneaking into markets, sneaking into motor parks, and everywhere they could see people unaware to cause havoc. We have forgotten all that. When did we hear of any suicide bombing around Abuja or Kaduna or Kano or any attack of Boko Haram? Unless we are able to sit down and be very realistic and realize that it's not the person that is occupying that office, so to say, but it is what he is supervising and what is going on. A lot is being done to ensure that the situation is stabilized in this country. And we have to remember very well that uh, we have issues with equipment and weapons. And these issues were identified. Necessary steps were taken to ensure that they are surmounted. Unfortunately, just at the time when these things are supposed to start coming in, the COVID-19 came. And COVID-19 distorted so many things, disrupted so many arrangements, uh, not only uh, regarding military purchases and so on and so forth, but regarding anything you can think. So if we begin to realize that uh, the government is doing something and certain things are affecting what the government is trying to do, then we should try as, at least to appreciate that, not to always cast as passion at government or select the services and say that they have to be removed before we have peace in this country. We have forgotten the fact that those people that are going to take over from these service chiefs are there. And they are the ones that are actually doing the foot soldier work for the service, service chiefs. If you remove the service chiefs today, they are the ones that will come. Go All to right. the uh, General, Army headquarters, Navy General, headquarters, Air Force headquarters. They are the ones that are, yes. General, if you look at what is happening just today, there are also reports of uh, two soldiers uh, and Boko Haram member uh, terrorists being killed as uh, the uh, troops there repelled the attacks. They are all in recent time. We also saw that the uh, the, the convoy of the governor of uh, of Brno State was also attacked. We've seen situation in the northwest region of the country. Perhaps the reason why some of these not lawmakers are asking for the sake of the service chiefs. Would you say that it's been success in the last five years under this government? Who do I think? I said, would you say that the fight against yeah, yeah, terrorism, the fight against, would you say that the fight against terrorism and insurgency in the country is a success in the last five years? I can tell you. Yes, I can tell you. It's a, it's a resounding success. Just we are fighting, we are fighting a war, a war in a vast area, a large country like Nigeria. There are uh, uh, battlegrounds almost uh, everywhere, and the soldiers are everywhere. The soldiers are even uh, at some extent of a stretch doing uh, practically police work to ensure that this country remains uh, safe. When you say the, there was an attack uh, at uh, Meduguri, I'm sure you are talking about the attack at Kukawa, where the Boko Haram attacked and the soldiers uh, gallantly repelled the attack. Both sides sustained a casualty. This is consistent with fighting a uh, war. And there is no how uh, you can uh, uh, remove this kind of situation in a war. The aim of the Nigerian armed forces is to win the war. You are most likely going to lose battles if you trace the history during the Second World War, during the Vietnamese War, uh, and the recent wars. You lose so many battles. But what is important is at the end, you win the war. And we are on the path of winning the war. Well, the, how close uh, are we, General? Is making effort 
General, how close yes. are we to winning the world? It's five years now under President Muhammadu Buhari, and a lot of Nigerians are wondering when is the gun going to be silenced totally from that region of the country and us having a total peace? I can tell you that uh, it's going to be soon. I can't give you a time frame, but it's going to be very soon because if the effort the government has put in procuring uh, equipment and necessary weapons, if the effort the government has put to up the intelligence gathering capabilities of the military and the police, if the effort the government is putting to restructure and reposition the uh, defense industrial cooperation of uh, the country, if the effort the government is doing at uh, reconciliation and other pacific means of dealing with the situation, if time will prove the government right in the sense that with COVID-19 easing out, most of these equipments, I will not mention them, they come in uh, with the COVID relaxation. I assure you that the capability of the military in all the uh, theaters of operation will be up. And you, right. will see changes let's conclude this conversation, General. you will see yeah. changes yeah. in L let's yeah? conclude the, let's conclude the conversation in 30 seconds general if the president met with service chiefs with some of the recent attacks we've seen especially in the northwestern region of the country and we are hearing that some of these insurgents are the ones who are engaged in banditry if some of those incidents led to the president saying, saying that the architecture the security architecture needs to be rejigged it's, it does look like it's different from the narrative that you have painted tonight as a success. So what are we rejigging if you say it's been a success? Just in 30 seconds, if you may answer that. When the president says uh, the security architecture needs to be rejigged, he's simply telling the service chiefs and all the stakeholders in the sector to look inward and see what they can do to improve their performance. Simple. Rejinging means to up the performance. And there is uh, some reform effort from the Ministry of Defense that is coming very soon. And uh, during that uh, reform, I assure you, and it will come very soon. And uh, most aspects of the military, including the Ministry of Defense, is going to be touched. And some of the reforms effort would definitely help in ensuring that the right number of troops are positioned in the right place with the right weapons and with the right state of morale. And that time, I assure you, is very close around the corner and uh, things will change by the time uh, all those things uh, come in place. But definitely, uh, President may not be satisfied because there are a lot of things going on. People are, are dying and then uh, a lot of people are being kidnapped and so on. But all these things are consistent with the situation we find ourselves. We as citizens also, we have our contribution to make. We have to make sure we support the security agencies in uh, various areas by providing uh, information and intelligence, by exposing those uh, bandits and criminals that are staying with us so that uh, they are exposed and the law uh, enforcement uh, agencies grab them and deal with them without right. any problem. So we should not uh, all assume that it's only government that's in, but security is in the hands of everybody and it's the business of everybody. But I know the government has a duty to ensure the security. And I believe that every effort is being made to ensure right, that General. the security of this country, the security of Nigerians is uh, maintained. But I All assure right. you, with the COVID-19 uh, 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 relaxing and the equipments and other things that are ordered coming in, you will see a change very soon in All the right. way our troops Major, are. Major General Ahmed no Jibrin. Is made to raise yeah. the morale. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Major General Ahmed Jibrin. We have to leave it at that. Uh, is a former director of military intelligence and a special advisor to the defense minister. Thank you indeed, General, for talking to us tonight. But that's how we leave it tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shiro Kimale. Bye for now.